Welcome. I'm Cheryl Mitchell, the president of Tree Leaven, which is a retreat and learning center on a sheep farm here in Addison County. And one of our great pleasures has been partnering with people that are interested in early childhood and supporting families. And my guest today is somebody who's going to hopefully bring something amazing and new to our community. So Carrie Ann Severy, who is the president of the Vermont Children's Museums. Carrie Ann, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, we're thrilled <laughs> with what you're doing. Do you want to start just by talking a little bit about your dream? for what might happen here? Uh, the vision, yes. So it starts with an indoor play space where children can go and run around, and especially in Vermont, where we have inclement weather for majority of the year, whether it's snowing or raining, it's hard to get outside and have fun, and there's, there aren't a lot of places for children to be indoors. Um, especially very little children or children who really need to run around, which is the case that I have a child who really needs to run around and a very little child. So finding a space where both of them can have their needs met uh, is not found in Addison County. Uh -huh. So it starts with the indoor play space, but then my dream is to have programming that goes beyond just kids running around and is really supporting the caregivers and helping them find each other and building their villages and mm -hmm. their support systems and finding connections to the amazing supports that we have available in Addison County. Cool. So you said you have two young ones. How, how old? My son is six and my daughter is two and a half. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my parenting journey uh, did not begin like most people's does. Uh, I was a foster parent first. We got my son when he was two and a half. Um, and then shortly after that, we got his half-sister, and we fostered them for a year and a half. Um, and shortly after we got his sister, I actually found out that I was pregnant. Um, so I had three for six months, um, and then his sister was reunified. His uh -huh. parents did a lot of really great work. Um, her parents, excuse me, did a lot of really great work, and we're able to reunify and they're doing really well now. Oh, um, nice. And my son had it, was on a different timeline, was on a different case, and his case plan turned to adoption. Um, and we adopted him at three, uh, one week exactly before I had my daughter. Wow, so what an amazing <laughs> journey. Yeah, yeah, and how unusual too. But yes. it sounds like you know so many of the support systems in the county then as well. Yeah, and I, being a foster parent was very eye-opening to, to what so, sort of supports are available or not available depending on where you fall in your classification of need. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the programming side of the Vermont Children's Museum really comes in because there are amazing supports in Essendon County for people who have great need. But for people who fall just above that level of qualifying, there aren't. Yeah. Um, so the idea of the Children's Museum is a space where anybody can come and receive supports and find out about the other supports that they might need that have a deeper level than what we can offer, but we can offer that medium level of support. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting because I think a lot, f I grew up in the era when the Boston Children's Museum had just started and I think that's in my mind um, what you were going to create, and I thought, oh my gosh, you can't do that in downtown Middlebury. <laughs> <laughs> um, or the Montshire Children's Museum. It sounds like this is something more, actually more complicated than, <laughs> than that. It's a complicated thing. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm, I'm envisioning like a scaled down version of those, those spaces, and I think right, size is not on our side in Addison County, yeah. or people coming in. Um, so it's not really a uh, it's not going to be a huge space. It's going to have to have rotating exhibits, which I think will keep it really fun right, and yeah. exciting. And someplace that the locals are going to want to go to often, rather than it being someplace where people who are visiting travel to once in a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, it sounds so needed. It sounds So talk about the steps that you, you've gone through already. Um, 
how did you bring people together? How did you partner? What are, are you looking for space? What all is going yes, on? Yes, all of those things. <laughs> um, so the idea originally blossomed um, when I had my daughter. I had been on every wait list for child care in Addison County and uh, didn't actually get a child care spot until she was almost a year old and I'm pretty sure only got that spot because my son qualified for a spot at the same place and they took the siblings. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> that child care in Addison County. Although I'm afraid I know that really because, because my daughter yeah. is going through the same thing. It yeah. Just um, you can't find a space. <laughs> so I, my first thought, my first trail I traveled down was researching how to start a child care center. Mm -hmm. um, and I read all of the regulations and I spoke to a lot of different people about um, what it would take, what kind of the space needs. I actually got certified to be a child care director because I had my principal license. Um, but ultimately, what I thought would be amazing is to have this play space that anybody can use and have that programming available to all with a child care center that uses it during the day, yeah. that low time for a children's museum, and then after school hours and on the weekends is when it would be open and anyone could come in and use it. So those two nonprofits that usually really struggle to keep the doors open because maintaining a building is so challenging, yeah. or paying to maintain a building is so challenging, that they would share a roof and thus share those expenses. So that, that's still like the really long-term dream uh -huh. that those two spaces uh -huh. would coincide. Um, but ultimately what I found was in looking at funding, you need to have a space before you can get any funding related to uh -huh. a childcare space. So the goal is to have a space, start the children's museum small, and then do a lot of fundraising and a big capital campaign so we can get something larger and then apply for the funding to add child care. So I'm just salivating well, over the <laughs> idea that you might do this at the Waybridge School, if they. Oh my gosh, that, <laughs> that, would, that would be a dream, yes. <laughs> um, so you, have you been working all by yourself or do you have a board? No, I have a board. We have been officially a board for one year. Um, <clears throat> and I was actually looking at the dates when each of my board members came on and they each came on exactly one month from each other, so the, the first one came on last May and then June, July, August, um, and we are still looking for more board members, mm -hmm. um, because right now, every, almost everyone on the board is a working mom. And that's hard to be able to find time to put on these events and raise awareness when we all are sort of in that same demographic where we're also taking care of young children. Yeah. So finding people of different demographics to join our board and who have more volunteer hours or who have a different voice. We'd love to have some men on the board. Um, I think that would bring a lot to what we can offer. But they have been crucial for me. I cannot do this by myself. Yeah. Um, I, I tried just a couple of pop-ups by myself and it was, I did it, but it was hard and it was not as good as it could have been. And Can the you talk a little yeah. bit more about the pop-ups? I know you did yeah. one yesterday at the library. Mm -hmm. And what are they like? Well, what the, happens there? The first pop-ups I did were at the bundle markets. Uh -huh. um, and that was just the very first time I showed up anywhere. And I had a couple of things to play with, but it was still COVID. Um, so it was mostly just a table with me explaining my dream. And that's when I started getting people excited and interested. Um, and then Megan had so many great ideas about how else we could do pop-ups and mm -hmm. what other things we could have there. And it's, it's really transformed into now, instead of st standing behind a table and it telling my dream, our pop-ups are, I have information if people want to learn more and they can ask me, but it's really about engaging with the children yeah. and showing what the Children's Museum could be, that we have these different activity centers which once we actually have a museum will, will be exhibits, but we have different activity centers that children can engage in at each pop-up. We bring slightly different ones. Um, 
our two most popular ones are arm painting and giant bubbles. You're right. Those yeah. are the best activities. <laughs> um, and we discovered the arm painting when we were at field days. It was just a line, constant line of kids wanting their arms painted. Where, arm where painting you'll be again, painted. right? Yes, we will be at field days again. Yeah. Um, really excited about that. I personally love the fair. I live for the fair. Um, Are you a Addison County resident? Yes. Where, did you grow up here? I did not. Uh -huh. I grew up on a farm in Maine. Uh -huh. um, and then I met my husband in college, and he grew up in Middlebury, um, Cornwall technically. And now we are buying his family's farm in Cornwall um, and returning to his roots and I have made Addison County my home. I, I never want to leave. I, I say I, I traded the ocean for the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it sounds like it's, first it's more complicated than just a children's museum because you're connecting parents with each other. It's not like, you know, the, a, a tourist thing that you right, show up. Right. Second, it sounds like it's on beyond playgroups because we have a long history of playgroups in the county. The sort of once a week, same folks show up each mm -hmm. time. Which is a little bit what the open play is starting to, to become. Uh -huh. um, and I'm, I'm aiming for, until we have a space, having weekly open play, just drop in whenever, play with your kid with the activities. It's all set up for you, and you don't have to clean up, and you can leave. Um, Sounds like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah. Um, actually, I bring my kids, and they have such a good time playing with the activities. It's actually easier than if I had just stayed at home. But one of the other activities or events that we're trying to do is monthly having pal time. And this is really where I'm getting into the, the programming that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. These pals for, for play and learn time. And there are time slots, vague time slots, for certain age groups. So we'll have an hour of babies, an hour of toddlers, and an hour of pre-K and above. And those times are fluid and those, those age ranges are fluid. But yeah. the whole point is to have time where kids of the same age know that they're going to have same age children there to play with and engage with. Wow. And the caregivers have other caregivers who have children the same age so that they can connect. So it's one thing it's to so brilliant, find Carrie another Ann. caregiver, yeah. but to have, if, you know, I meet someone whose kid is 11, I, I don't have as much to connect with because my kids are so much younger. Yeah. So to, to meet other caregivers of the same age, and then we have information to give about developmental milestones for that specific age range, um, activities they can do that enhance their children's development mm -hmm. in that range, common problems that they might encounter and how to troubleshoot that. So the, the pal time is what I get really excited about. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm wondering, um, so what do you need? What kind of help can the community give you? I, I, need, I need a space. Okay. And in order to have a space, I need both funding and volunteers. So I, I need the money back up and I need people who are available and willing to be in this space and engage with caregivers and children and mm -hmm. pick after them in the exhibits. Um, but that, that's when we finally get a physical location. For now, I need volunteers to help with these pop-up events, like field days is all day for five days because we have our, our setup and takedown and to have volunteers there is is huge because then I don't have to be arm painting and also trying to explain the vision for the children's yeah. museum at the same time and are you you're not licensed as child care no, yet or, and yet. you're probably <laughs> <clears throat> you might be an after-school program or get one of yes. those summer learning things yep. or an after-school. Yep. We do hope to offer after-school programming, some vacation programming, summer programming. Yeah. So interested high school students, college students, can you work with people like that? Certainly. Um, those would be great to have at our events as volunteers. Uh, we have a big event coming this summer that I am especially excited about. We're putting on a children's concert. On yeah. July 23rd, it's in the morning, um, and we are going to need all hands on deck. 
it's going to be uh, on the field behind woodchuck cider yeah and i'm envisioning like a baby cider stock although it's two hours <laughs> not a full cider stock mm -hmm. um but we've got Jan john gamore coming and moose jr and it's going to be super fun with lots of music and then because Kids can't just sit and do one thing all the time. Although the music is very engaging, we're gonna have all sorts of lawn activities and art activities around the back that they can engage in. That sounds and great. I know when yeah. we were interviewing parents, especially as COVID was coming on and people couldn't connect with each other mm -hmm. and we're stuck at home, I guess it's fair to say, stuck at home with young yeah. kids and not much to do. People were saying they were so desperate to yeah. have things to do outside that would yes. be safe mm -hmm. or relatively safe. Right. with other kids and places to meet parents. It sounds like you're connecting all of those I'm trying. Dots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also felt that isolation of being with my children at home all the time and nowhere to go and no one to connect with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is there any stuff that you're doing on Zoom? Is there any sort of virtual lead up to what you're doing for the no, in-person? No, I thought about, it, it, it's sort of a thought that's in the works of, of starting sort of, sort of parent support groups. Um, I'm on the CSAC board, and so we're, I'm, I'm hoping we can partner with CSAC to offer some, some support groups, especially around like, parents of children with special needs. I, for one, would love a support group of children with special needs, or adoptive parents, or foster parents, um, or parents whose children are in the foster system. Mm -hmm. all, all of those really would value support and it's hard to find times to have them in person because right. you've got your kids with you so some sort of virtual support session right. would be Can, great it, it sounds like you have a professional background i'm a teacher a yep. teacher mm -hmm. you were a principal you're I'm, early I'm not a principal not yet. a principal yet I'm my, my <laughs> okay, kids are you too, too little to take that dive <laughs> I know the commitment that that takes, <laughs> yeah. and I don't want to take away from family life. So can you um, maybe walk us from Maine to your growing interest in kids and teaching? And I, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. Um, and when I was in college, I, I wanted to be a music teacher. But when I was in college, it was in the middle of the recession, and arts programs were closing left and right. So I said, well, I shouldn't do that because I want a job. So I went with math, which uh -huh. was also something I felt comfortable with. And I had tutored, I tutored all through college. Um, I had actually taught a math class to middle schoolers when I was in high school. Um, so then I got my master's right after college and came to Vermont and started teaching right away. And it was, it was getting my son really. And I, I really wanted to foster. Yeah. And when that finally happened and, and having him in my home um, was a totally different experience than having kids who have struggled in your classroom. That was sort of my specialty. I loved working with kids who, who had a variety of challenges, mm -hmm. um, whether it, it's math anxiety or generalized anxiety or trauma um, or different sorts of math learning disabilities. That, that was my, what I love to do. Yeah. Um, but having a, a child who had experienced trauma in your home was a very different, different, <laughs> different yeah. story. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I took a deep dive <laughs> into trauma and child development, um, going really towards the early years because I had studied older. I had studied you know, school-aged children right. and he was at a much younger developmental level. Um, I mean, even at two. And I've, I've been learning so much that I think at this point, my, my vision for my career path has actually changed. And I'm not sure that I want to be a principal anymore. Um, I think what I want to be is a trauma specialist who mm -hmm. works in schools, helping teachers understand trauma, how it affects the brain, and how to work with the kids in their care. Wow. And have oh. a children's museum. <laughs> and have a children's museum. Okay. Um, and it's, we're, out, we're getting out of time. Yeah. And I'm just worried that I haven't asked you the right questions to, for you to tell us other things that you'd like to talk about. I mean, 
I, I could go on and on and on about uh -huh. the vision for the Children's Museum and what we're hoping to do. Um, and really what it boils down to is if, if anybody is excited by anything that I've said and wants to learn more, to contact me. If they're excited and want to help us make our dreams come true, please give us money yep. and contact us. We have a website beautifully designed by one of our board members. Um, and there's, there's lots of information on there. There's how to donate on there. Mm -hmm. And we are on Facebook and Instagram, and that's right. where we're posting anything about our pop-ups yeah. um, and, and general updates. And I'm going to have a monthly email newsletter coming out soon, too. Okay. And all, all your information will come up at the end of this show, too. Great. So it will be in one place for people to refer back to. It's been so exciting talking to you, Carrie Ann. Thank you so much. I'm just <laughs> thrilled. I'm so glad that um, Darla invited you. I think it's something that everybody in the community needs to know about and we'll figure out how to make it happen with you. I hope so. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And for those of you that are listening, Carrie Ann's information will come up. You can tell she would love to have a phone call. Um, we also want to give a shout out to the Middlebury Community Television because they're great for helping people get information out. So if you have a dream or an idea that's going to benefit, doesn't have to be young children, they are happy to support nonprofits or other community activities, just give them a call. You don't need to know anything about television. Just check in with them. So thanks for watching. <laughs>